students to the certificate program in tourism. Today, we will be discussing about a very interesting area that is statistics and measures in tourism. Statistics is an important part of our life and its influence our life in the form of magazines, newspapers, internet, television and media. This subject is a part of our decision making process at individual level, organizational level and government level. In this lecture, we will understand what is statistics and how we can apply it to tourism. Along with understanding the meaning of statistics, we will also talk about the need for statistics and will connect it to tourism. Students, in today's environment, it is required that the decisions should be taken on the basis of reliable and concrete information. We are always surrounded by the problems and the environment around us is constantly changing. The organizations may have enough of information based on which the decisions can be taken. But data collection cannot give any results as they are in a raw form. They cannot be useful to draw conclusions until and unless they are changed as per the purpose. Therefore, certain analytical techniques are applied so that rational decisions can be taken. The organizations should have the ability to convert the data into meaningful information before taking the decision. To get the right solution to the problem, we should first understand the problem. This needs lot of data related to the problem along with clear understanding and interpretation of the data. If the data is wrong, insufficient or is good data not used properly, the purpose will be defeated. Our knowledge is always incomplete. We can never bet that we know everything. But the problems are still there to be solved. With the information related to our problems, these problems can be handled by statistics and by using the measures of statistics we can get the desired solutions. After this lecture you will be able to understand what is statistics, what is the scope and need of statistics. We will also talk about tourism statistics in India. Now look at the circle. A perfect circle in this slide may look like an imperfect one. The reason is that whatever we feel and see may not always be right. We need to justify our results by supporting it with relevant data and analysis. After getting an idea that what we will be discussing, it is the right time to start with statistics. What is statistics? For any layman, statistics may be numeric information in quantitative terms. It can be facts or information expressed in numerical statements. But statistics requires that this information should be highly meaningful and convenient means of communication. So what is statistics? Statistics are aggregates of the fact. Any item cannot be termed as statistics if they are not related or a part of aggregates related to any field of inquiry. If you say there are 1000 students enrolled for the certificate course in tourism, it is not statistics. But if figures are collected for the students enrolled for other certificate courses, this is statistics. Why? As this information can be compared and it can be analyzed. Secondly, 
statistics include only those which can be numerically expressed. Qualitative statements like intelligent, very intelligent, average intelligence cannot become a part of statistics as they are mere statements which cannot be measured. But if these statements can be quantified by giving intelligence questions or any kind of scores in numeric terms, they are called statistics. Next important thing is how we collect the data. The data, whether estimated or actually counted, there should be reasonable level of accuracy. Enumeration means actual counting of data, like counting the number of students for a particular course. The data is more accurate than exact. However, sometimes actual counting of data is not possible due to certain reasons. Maybe the population or the area of study is large or infinite or the cost of enumeration is high, resources and the time is limited. Then the data is estimated on the basis of samples instead of enumeration. When the data is collected through samples, they are not very precise and accurate as compared to actual data. The degree of accuracy depends on the nature of data and the objective of the study. But still, certain level of accuracy has to be maintained so that conclusions have logical meaning. For statistics to be meaningful, they should be collected in a systematic manner. The data collection should be properly planned on the basis of the objective of your study. In case the collection has to be done by filling a questionnaire or a survey, proper care should be taken in the selection of trained investigators and the effort should be made to reduce biases in the data. Haphazard collection of data may lead to wrong or misleading results. Statistics of the data should be affected by multiplicity of causes. Like if I say that the number of tourists increased in 10 years in India, there are a number of factors that has affected the number of tourists. It can be income of the people, cheaper means of transportation, better technology, and marketing, brand image of India, etc. We cannot say that the increase in number was only because of the increase in the income of the people. Next important thing is, before the collection of data, the purpose of collection should be very clear. It is important to first clearly set objectives of the study and then decide the appropriate method of data collection. For example, when collecting the data on the number of visitors in a souvenir shop, the purpose of data should be clear. Whether we want to study the type of visitor, that is domestic or international, whether we want to study the spending pattern of the visitor or the time when the greatest number of visitors visit the store, we should also decide whether we will be collecting the data by observing the visitors or by their own interview or by asking the shop owner. Also, only the required data should be collected. Collecting too much of data and then reducing it to the required data may result in the wastage of resources and time. The data which you have collected should be comparable and in relation to each other. Collecting the data of the per capita income of a certain age group in a particular country or a group of country is a comparable data. The comparisons must relate to the same phenomena instead of comparing apples and eggs. But actually statistics is a field of study which requires collection of data using appropriate scientific methods. There are so many ways of presenting the data. The collected data should be summarized, presented and analyzed using appropriate scientific measures. Let us see what are the features of statistics. Let us see 
different types of data given in the slide. Hotel occupancy rate, number of visitors to a monument, contribution of tourism in GDP, employment rate in tourism, forex earning by tourism sector, number of listed companies in tourism and hospitality industry. Are these statistics, if they have all the features which we have discussed, then it is statistics. Now, after getting an idea what is statistics, the question arises, why we need statistics? But if we look at our previous discussion, we can easily make out why we need statistics. Let us discuss some aspects which highlight the importance of statistics. Firstly, it simplifies the complexities. There is too much of data or the information which is available and it is also unorganized. So we can call it raw data. This data is of no use as it is not in a form to draw conclusions. Therefore, statistics help us to present the data in a few values in a desirable form. For example, the study of age of students enrolled in a university will give you a fair idea of the average age of the students in that university. Secondly, statistics enables comparisons. As the data is collected according to different characteristics and is in relation to each other, it is easy to make comparisons and interpretations. Diagram, graphs, percentages, averages, index numbers, measures of variation are the various statistical met methods which facilitates comparison between one set of data with another one. As statistics is an aggregate of facts and figures, comparison is always possible and in fact, comparison help us to understand the data in a better way. Statistics is a tool which helps in comparisons and analysis of data for different time periods or between different organizations or situations which helps in taking decisions. Many policy decisions are taken by the government based on the various comparisons. For example, if the production of wheat is known in one state or region, it can always be compared with the production of another state or region. Statistics also helps in determining the relationship. There are many statistical tools and techniques which help us to understand the relationship between the data and different types of data. The study of rainfall and productivity is a good example. Also, the study of relationship between income and expenditures can be done with the help of statistics. Statistics also enables the realization of magnitude. When the data is expressed in qualitative form, it may lead to misinterpretations. Qualitative data expressions does not allow for precise interpretations. Simple statement of fact relating to a phenomena not expressed in numeric terms may help to understand the scenario but does not reveal the magnitude involved. For example, if we say educated people, we mean people are educated, but whether they are graduates, postgraduates, engineers or doctors, it is not clear. Facts when expressed in numbers gives such an idea. Statistics facilitate the expression of the degree or the magnitude when expressed in numeric term. Now with the help of statistics, what we can do? We can easily estimate the industry, the demand for the product, services and other facilities. We can also estimate the size of the industry revenue wise, number wise, number of tourists expected, tourism receipts and expenditures. Industry growth can also be calculated along with the industry earning, tourist spending and employment rate generated by tourism. As of now, we are clear with the meaning of statistics. Let us see how statistics can be useful for tourism. 
The need to develop and use the theory of statistical measurement in tourism rose as the volume of tourist traffic began to reach significant proportion after World War I. Tourism is a complex social phenomenon. It includes a number of activities, entities, sectors, subjects and behavior. Tourism involves movement of people from one place to another with social, environmental and economic consequences. These consequences need to be reported and measured with its impact on specific geographical areas. Statistics evaluate the magnitude and significance of these consequences to a tourist destination. Statistics quantify these consequences in the form of role and contribution to the economy, society and for the country. UNWTO developed tourism satellite accounting and its supporting system for tourism statistics to develop international understanding of the contributions of international and domestic tourism to national economies, consistency in their measurement and comparability in analysis of this important activity. Actions, strategies, policies, whether at local or global level, depend on some kind of measurement of tourism activities and its effect. Statistics serve as the source of information for government, planners, researchers, operators and regulators. With the help of forecasting done by the statistical methods, future policies and plans are designed. These tools help the government and businesses to predict the future and plan to meet the future challenges. The data about every aspect of tourism is collected, analyzed and interpreted. The predictions are made based on results or findings from the analysis. Statistics also facilitate comparisons across the countries and regions. Statistics are required to evaluate the magnitude and significance of tourism to a tourist destination. There are various statistical measures which quantify the role and contribution of tourism to the economy and to society and for a country. These statistics also clear the part played by the tourism in the balance of payment and foreign exchange earnings. These comparisons can be done by calculating the volume of tourist arrivals. We can easily compare the number of tourists visiting different destinations over a period of time. This data can be further processed to understand average length of stay, that is the number of days of stay at a destination. The average length of stay will help us to estimate the tourist traffic or the demand for tourist accommodation. Similarly. The contribution of tourism to the economy can be measured by tourist expenditure or tourism receipt. Tourist expenditure includes expenses made by the tourist on journey, goods and services, small consumables, gifts and souvenirs purchased by the tourist. The expenditures made by the tourist becomes the tourism receipt to the destination they have visited. The data collected for domestic tourists visited a destination along with the expenditures and receipts gives a fair idea of domestic tourism, the regions generating and the destinations receiving the domestic tourist. This data can be analyzed and studied depending on the purpose. Let us see some more terms which will give an idea that how the statistical data is collected and interpreted in tourism. International tourist. The data related to the tourist visiting from foreign countries can be analyzed to find out the increase or decrease in the total number of tourists visiting to a particular destination or from a particular country. This data can be further studied to understand the international tourist for a particular reason or season. Length of stay. The number of days spent by the tourist can give us a deep insight 
on the number of rooms required, the spending pattern of the tourist, requirement of other facilities like medical, transportation, banking and insurance at that destination. Revenue and employment, this is another area contributed by statistics. The data for tourist arrivals, spending, length of stay help us to estimate the revenues earned at a destination and also the employment generated. Statistics also contribute in estimating the investments in tourism industry. The data collected for the tourism related activities help in finding out the investment requirement, planning and development of physical facilities. Statistics are required in marketing and promotion which can be effective only if they are based on assessment of actual and potential markets. The investment requirements are based on the expected return from such investments and the payback period when such investments will be fully recovered. The data on occupancy, profitability, expenditures will require statistical techniques to make proper estimation of investments for the requirement of hotels, airports, roads and other facility. Therefore, the volume and the characteristics of tourist movement have to be determined quantitatively. These statistics will also help in checking the feasibility of new project or the existing projects. Balanced growth requires more focus and informed planning and investment decision by tourism business. Investment demands tourism growth projections rigorous and as accurate. Therefore, tourism requires to rely on statistics for research, planning and design of marketing programs and for financial projections. Statistics helps to estimate the demand and sector-wise performance for comparative analysis. Tourism statistics is also crucial to macroeconomic and business planning. It helps to estimate tourist arrivals, length of stay, and estimate of expenditure, carrying capacity, etc. Statistics is also required to evaluate the magnitude and significance of tourism to a tourist destination. These statistics quantify the role and the contribution of tourism to the economy and to the society and for a country so that the part played by tourism in the balance of payment can be estimated. Statistics provides relevant, comprehensive, accurate and objective based statistical information. Generally, statistics are invaluable for monitoring the country's economic and social conditions. The planning and evaluation of government, private sector programs, investments, policy debates, advocacy and the creation and the maintenance of an informed public needs statistics. Tourism statistics is necessary for what? It is required for political, economical and social needs to understand the levels of air, water and soil pollution to understand the potential benefits from tourism for the development and its impact on society and community. Statistics are also crucial to forecasting and estimation required for planning, expansion plans so that the optimal resources can be used. It is needed for taking informed decisions crucial to policy framework formulation both for the public sector and the private sector at international, regional or national levels. Next important aspect is marketing. Tourism marketing is a follow up of planning and development to maximize economic gains. It requires a lot of understanding of the customers, their demands, products and trends. Effective marketing plan identifies market segments, product positions and are effectively communicated. The plan needs collection and analysis of data on global trends, market segments, tourist profiles, destination characteristics, their strengths and weaknesses. The data collected by various organizations help in market segmentation on the basis of country or region of origin and the purpose of visit. The demographic factors 
can also be analyzed like age, education, occupation, nationality. These destination wise analysis of strength, weaknesses, threats and opportunities need to be assessed for directing product development and marketing policies. So, as of now, we have understood the meaning of statistics and why statistics is important. It is the right time to study the types of statistical method we use to analyze the data which can be collected. Basically, there is two subdivision of statistical methods, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. What is descriptive statistics? Descriptive statistics describes the data by presentation of numerical facts or data in either table or graph forms and with the methodology of analyzing the data. It is the branch of statistics devoted to the summarization and description of data. It is only the presentation of data which describes the characteristics and the features of data. For example, the average age of students in a class is 19 to 22 years. Not much can be interpreted from these data and to take more reliable decision, we need to further analyze them. The second method is inferential statistics. Now this involves techniques for making inferences about the whole population on the basis of observations obtained from samples. The decisions are drawn on the basis of sample characteristics which can be applied to the whole population. Although we have talked about statistics at length and its need and importance, but it has its own limitations. As we have discussed, statistics deals only with aggregates. One figure or information will not carry any meaning. If we say the foreign exchange earning from tourism was 1,77,874 crores in 2017, it does not make any sense. But if we compare it with the earnings of 2016, then it is statistics. Secondly, statistics cannot study qualitative data. We cannot study honesty, loyalty, color, integrity as they cannot be expressed in quantitative terms. We can study them if we can assign any numeric value on the basis of some logic criteria. Statistics also suffer from the limitation of approximations. The result of statistics are not universal truth. They are not exact science and they are only applicable with certain assumptions. Statistics also need skill and professional people. Understanding of the data and correct interpretation of data requires professionals who are trained in statistical method. Analysis and interpretation by inexperienced or untrained people can give wrong and misleading results. Now after looking at all the parts of statistics, let us see how tourism statistics is collected in India. India started collecting the data related to tourists since 1951. At that time, no well developed system was there. Therefore. The number was counted on the basis of custom clearance documents. Since then, various methods have been developed to collect the data related to tourism. These data are collected by various government and other agencies for different purposes. The official data for tourism in India is collected by Ministry of Tourism. Ministry of Tourism bring out an annual publication called India Tourism Statistics every year giving details of international and domestic tourism. Tourism statistics give the data related to foreign tourist arrivals. So let us look at the foreign tourist arrival data. The foreign tourist arrival during 1951 was 16,829, which crossed 1 million mark in 1986. Ministry of Tourism was publishing purpose-wise foreign tourist arrivals till 2013 on the basis of disembarkation cards. Although after 2014, the data was collected on the basis of types of visa issued. As per the statistics 
in 2017, 59.3% foreign tourist arrival was for leisure, holiday and recreation, 19.7% for Indian Disabora and 13.6% for business and profession. Another important data is length of stay, which is collected and analyzed for tourists in India. Nationwide data on duration of stay is very important for promotion and marketing of tourism. Tourism Statistic 2018 first time published the data on the duration of the stay country wise. The current statistics show that the average duration of stay of foreign nationals in India is 21 days, where the tourist of Yemen has longest stay of 66 days in India and the tourist of Mexico has the shortest stay of 16 days. Foreign exchange earnings, another important data, ministry collects this data on foreign exchange earning for tourism. As per the monthly estimates given by Tourism Statistics 2018, foreign exchange earning was 1,77,874 crore which was 15.4 percent more as compared to 2016. Domestic tourism, another important area of tourism in India. These statistics also give the data on domestic tourism. Domestic tourism is the travel of the resident of the country within the country. Ministry of Tourism received the data from states and union territories. This data is compiled by the statistical cells of Department of Tourism or State and State Administration. There has been a continuous increase in the number of domestic tourists. Since 1991, state and union territories has seen compounded annual growth rate of 13.7% in 2017. So students, from our discussion, we can conclude that statistic influences every aspect of life and all the operations of business and management. As of now, business are becoming more complex and the environment is constantly changing. We need vast databases to be analyzed by statistical methods. Thank you.